everybody has their favorite way of camping, whether it's a KOA or dispersed camping on National Forest property. But the most overlooked campground is the regional, city, or county park. Today we're going to take a look at Chestnut Ridge Regional Park in Brunston Mills, West Virginia. Y'all follow me, I'll show you around. Before we go any further, I'd like to remind you guys, please don't forget to mash that subscribe button, give me a big old thumbs up, maybe even leave me a comment or two, I sure would appreciate it. Wanted to tell you guys about this great app too, RV Parky. What a wonderful app to go find campgrounds all over this great country of ours. And it's absolutely free. Check your Play Store. There are always a few pros and cons when it comes to campgrounds. This one is no exception. While there are plenty of things to celebrate at this campground, unfortunately there are a few things on the negative side. So why don't I go ahead and get those out of the way, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the place, and then I'll tell you some of the positives. Well really there's only three things I didn't care about this park. First of all, the roads this time of year are covered in leaves which makes it very, very difficult to see where you're going. Secondly, if you come in at night, there is virtually no lights in this campground. And third, the signs could be better. We wound up coming in after dark and got lost. We were not too happy about that, period. But the next day, when we got a good look at the place, boy, did we choose right. So let's move on to a little bit about this park. Chestnut Ridge Park and Campground is surrounded by Cooper's Rock State Forest and the West Virginia University Forest, creating an outdoor recreational area of over 16,000 acres. Located just 10 miles east of Morgantown, West Virginia on Interstate I-68 at exit 15. During the day, guests are welcome to picnic, begin a hike through the WVU Forest, Fish the two ponds, no license required, catch and release only. Swim in our pond beach area or engage in a family sport in our large field. During the winter, guests often use the park for sledding. They don't always have snow in the winter, but I'll get to that here in a moment. But they do have a snowmaker, and they've been known to make snow for sledding and other activities. So a little bit about the campground. Check-in time is 2 o'clock and checkout time is 11 a.m. They highly recommend you make reservations for an RV site well in advance if you're looking for a weekend stay. Some weekends book up weeks or even months in advance. A 50% deposit is required when reserving an RV site further than seven days in advance. If the reservation is for the current week, the reservation must be paid in full upon booking. All of the travel trailer RV sites are back in gravel lots with 30 amp electric, water, a picnic table, and a fire ring. All trash must be taken to the trash bins. I'm assuming the same rules apply as in other campgrounds where there are wildlife that'll get into your trash. And I'm telling you, that's a mess you don't want to have to deal with. Tents are not allowed to be set up on any RV or trailer site. They're open year-round and provide water all year by using a frost-free hydrant. If you are camping in freezing temperatures, please read and adhere to the instructions posted on each hydrant. Now, what I was going to say earlier, this campground is open year-round, which is fantastic. Even in the winter, we like to camp. With that comes snow, and it's rather unfortunate. We planned our trip to where we were leaving to come home on a Saturday because it was supposed to snow on Sunday. Well, I got up Saturday morning, opened up the door, and lo and behold, there sat three inches of snow. Whew! Mrs. Eating Good in the Woods wasn't too happy about that, so we did a down and dirty breakdown and we got out there as quick as we could. So bear in mind, that is something that can happen in the wintertime in West Virginia. This park was originally built 
by the Civilian Conservation Corps back in the 1930s. And while it hasn't been used for that purpose in quite some time, a few of the original buildings still remain. Most notably, the old schoolhouse and the outdoor brick oven. Apart from camping, both tent and RV, Chestnut Ridge also offers cabins. Everything from modern cabins to rustic cabins. The Clare Lodge was built in 1937 by Reverend Lee Clare, director of the Student Service Project, and his students built the Clare Lodge from stones found in the area. The lodge is now a living memorial to the man who built it. The Clare Lodge, which goes for $250 a night, sleeps approximately 20 people in two dormitory-style bedrooms. And hey, you remember how I promised you all the positive stuff? Well, here it goes. First and foremost, it's open year-round. When you're a hardcore camper like me and Mrs. Eating Good in the Woods, you appreciate that. But apart from that, the place is extremely remote. Not a whole bunch of anything around it, and I kind of like that. And it's also very quiet. Our end of the campground was loaded with people, and we didn't hear a peep. And quite frankly, look at this video. It's wonderful when you find yourself in the midst of God's handiwork. After all, isn't that what this is all about? Well, listen, this is going to be about it for this episode of Eating Good in the Woods Campground Reviews. Chestnut Ridge Regional Park, I don't think you can beat it. Lovely place, lovely folks. Put this one on your list, y'all. So until next time, y'all going out there and be nice to one another. I love y'all. God bless. Bye-bye.